Welcome to month 10 of 10, number 10 of the Lead Dad Diaries with Skip Cherry Holmes. We've been following Skip's journey now for 10 months, which is a long time, but it's gone by very quickly as he's gone from touring musician to lead dad to, as we're going to find out today, lead dad who occasionally gets the band all back together, but only in tropical locations. Uh, Skip. Welcome back again to Lead Dad Diaries. Thank you so much. It's good to be back. You know, last time, before we get into our five questions, last time we talked, uh, you weren't gloating, but I brought it up because I couldn't help myself with <laughs> uh, going on a cruise. Sideline was going to perform. Uh, it looked pretty good. Uh, was it good? Was it fun? It was good. It was really good. And, um, that, and honestly, it, it really kind of, folds into that what's what's been the best part of the last month for sure um because going out and i talked about it on the last one um but uh you know i've, I've done cruises a long time uh since i was a teenager i've been able to perform on a on a cruise almost every year up until uh 2020 well 2020 being the last one i, I had done and then from 2021 on uh hadn't done any until this this most recent one and it was really cool for me to have my family with me on this one uh even when stephanie and i were were dating and then when we got first got married didn't have any kids and we talked about how cool would it be to be able to do something like this and include the kids take the family and and all of that and it's it most certainly uh paid out the way that i kind of dreamed it would uh because the the all of those experiences that i'd had so many times that's that's the way i look at a lot of the the things i've done in my life it's like i've i've had a chance to travel a lot i've had a chance to see a lot of things and i would love as my family grows and and as we do things to to be in a position to take them to these places i've been to uh and do some of the things that i've had a chance to do and uh revisit things myself which which would be really cool but the cruise was definitely a bucket list thing um and getting together with the guys and playing some music was fun too you know is this understanding uh, we kind of have as, as a band, you know, I, I have no desire to get back out on the road and tour and, and be, you know, gig after gig after gig, you know, my, my, uh, my brother tours still. Um, and he has these tours he goes on and he, I think, uh, here a few years ago, he went to Australia for two months. And it's like, I have no, it's, yeah, it's, it's a cool thought, but I have no desire to do anything like that. However, it is fun to get together in a low pressure setting and just jam a little music. Uh, the people were really excited to see us playing and, and it was very relaxed and easygoing and, and, uh, that kind of thing, especially if you can do it in, in the tropical regions of, of the, uh, South Atlantic and the Caribbean, uh, most certainly will not say no to that. Was it the first time your kids had seen you perform? Did they get to see you? N no. I So Aiden saw a lot. When he was born, I was in the throes of some of the heaviest touring I had, I had done. Adeline was born. It, she was, you know, what they call a COVID baby. Uh, so she was born when things were re really, really slow. And it was shortly after things picked back up with her that I decided to dial them back yet again so she hadn't seen as many but but my son has seen us perform he knows all the words to all the songs he's out there singing singing loud and and just you know he's he's all excited he's got his favorite songs and i'll send a song out to him from the stage and he gets super excited and uh but yeah he's he's a always been a, a huge sideline fan for sure all right i should have guessed that the best part of the month was going to be uh, the cruise that that's, you know, that's fair. This cruise that went so well, I mean, was there even a worst part or what, what was the, the, the worst <laughs> part of the, the, the past month? Maybe leaving. <laughs> uh, no. So we actually softened that blow a little bit because when we got off the ship, 
while we were down there in, in Florida, we got off the ship and we ran over to, to one of our favorite places. We went over to Disney world for like two or three days. Um, and there wasn't really an agenda. It was just like, we don't feel like going home right now. So let's not. And, uh, that was kind of fun. Uh, we got to, to go over there and, and do all that, but inevitably we did have to come back home and, uh, feed our fish and uh collect all the mail and all that good stuff uh and <laughs> come back to the to the crappy cold weather uh that that you that we were not having to deal with down there although i will say uh, the breeze in florida can be a little chilly chilly sometimes uh i'll take it though i'll take it but um and i had a different experience here in this last month too uh, right after we got back, my mother-in-law, actually, my mother-in-law's mother has been in, uh, in poor health and they, her and her husband lived down in Alabama. And so they needed some assistance from mother-in-law and my, uh, my wife went with her. They, they left and went to Alabama for three, three days to help out with some stuff down there for family issues which was i mean that was a tough one for for because there's a lot of emotions and whatnot um but it was also a new experience for me uh because it was my first weekend with just me and the kids for consecutive days i've done an overnight when my wife's gone and spent the night with somebody uh i've done you know obviously during the day I've had the kids if she's gone out or I've taken the kids out and done something, but I had a solid weekend from Friday through, uh, Sunday night or Monday morning, uh, with just me and the kids. And that was a, that was a good one. Um, because it's a, it's a different experience for me, uh, trying to balance all the different things that are going on. It definitely gave me that sense of lead dadedness. Um, and, and then like, cause like Sunday morning I had to, to my typical routine on a Sunday morning, I have to get ready and I go to church. I'm usually the first person at church and I open the doors and get the whole place ready and all that. And that's at like seven o'clock in the morning. Well, now I'm, I've got to make sure my kids are ready. They're dressed all the stuff and get them over there and, and then dealing with uh, a little bit of the tood as well. Cause they're, they're, they usually don't even come until like closer to nine o'clock. So uh, but it was good. It was a good experience for, for me, as far as, uh, having the kids one-on-one, -on -one, I wouldn't be scared to do it again. Um, but, uh, that the, the reason for that being that my, my wife had some, some family stuff she had to deal with, which hasn't been easy uh, around here, but I mean, this, those things come up for sure. I can't believe you still uh, went to church and opened the doors at 7 a.m. with the kids. Like two hours uh, in a church in the life of a child waiting for the service to start. I mean. Right. Well, I did. I, I, I will say I did have some support. I reached out to some of the parents of the, the kids' friends at the church, and I let them know, hey, uh I could really use the assistance of your children while I'm doing, cause I'm also doing like rehearsal and I'm, I'm as a part of the music and everything. So, uh, they were very gracious in coming a little bit early themselves, bringing their kids so that my kids had other kids to hang out with and play with. And, uh, they weren't just sitting there, you know, bored or staring at screens the whole time. Um, and then I was able to, have the peace of mind of knowing that they were in good hands while I handled the business I needed to handle. All right. Now from this, do, do we get the best lead dad moment? Does the best lead dad moment of the past month, does it come from the cruise? Does it come from the weekend of solo lead dadedness? Does it come from something else? What, what was the best lead dad moment of the past month? So I think it's kind of a, a mix of it all. So when it, when it comes to the cruise, uh, I definitely felt that, that, uh, satisfaction of, Hey, I've, I'm here. I'm with my kids. I'm with my family. Uh, I'm 
in a way, one of the, one of my biggest things is to show other families, other, especially dads, that this kind of stuff is possible. If you put your, if you put your mind to it and you're willing to, you, and, and a lot of it has to do with mindset and, and believe me, uh, it would have been a blast if it had just been my wife and myself. And I'm not knocking that at all, but I think there, there are a lot of, of fathers or a lot of uh, couples, families who are hesitant because of whether or not, you know, how their kids would adapt to it or, you know, the kind of disruption that it would cause. And I feel like it's worth encouraging. I've, I've, I've done that. You know, that, that panic that parents get, you're in a in a room full of people and their kid starts to to cry out scream out a little bit and they're trying so hard to keep that kid quiet and they're trying to do now i understand sometimes you do have to get up and leave the room but i have made it a point in those instances to go over to the the father or the mother if if appropriate um and let them know hey i think it's cool that you brought your kids you know don't I've been there. Don't, don't think for a second, what you're going through with them is magnified a hundred times to you than it is to the rest of the people here. Don't give it a second thought because the fact that you've bothered to bring them to this event or the fact that you've gone through the efforts to do this for them is huge. And it says a lot about, uh, about your, your feelings, uh, you know, wanting to be inclusive with your family. And that's how I felt about it because it wasn't the most convenient, you know, it, Stephanie and I, I, I hate to say it. We had to miss out on, on some of the things that some of the other uh, families and couples were doing because we had young kids, they had to get back to the room. We had, you know, there were certain exclusions, but if you don't obsess over that kind of stuff, then, and you really bask in the, I have, the opportunity to to do this with my family and regardless of whatever it is I might be missing out on I feel like I'm more fulfilled by being here with my family going to the dinners you know we dressed up for dinner every night which was so much fun um and uh, went at, and it was like an event and it was it was just really cool and and uh uh, getting, you know, all the pictures, all the memories, things that I know Aiden will remember, but Adeline, you know, it'll be good to have those photographs and, and stuff like that. Uh, it, it gave me that sense of pride of, you know, this is, this is one of the perks most certainly to being, you know, kind of owning my own schedule, owning my own position. Uh, you know, you call it the, the lead dad, and part of that, you know, obviously is you, you alter different parts of your life to, to embrace family time, embrace your children more and, and, and whatnot. And, uh, and this definitely shows where that paid out. And then with the, with the situation with, uh, going to, with my, my wife going to Alabama and me having the kids for the weekend, I think that was more of a, it was both pride and humility all wrapped into one. You definitely appreciate your partner and the things that they do and the things that they think of and all of that stuff. And she, she had a lot laid out for me that I was able to just, Oh, well she, you know, she's got this taken care of or, you know, Hey, the the best way to handle this situation is such and such um, that I got to get my hands, you know, heavy into while I was uh, with them for a weekend and her not being really even accessible because she had so much going on where she was at. So um, I, I, like I said, it, it's something that I definitely wouldn't be afraid to do again. Um, but it's, it's uh, it, it, it helped me feel like, okay, here's the dirty side to being the lead dad, so to speak you got the fun side and then you got the real nitty gritty side, which is, you know, Hey, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do with your family, even with your spouse, not around and, and whatnot. But I enjoyed all of it. So I, I, I kind of take both of those points as my, my lead dad highs for sure. And then is it fair to guess that, you know, the most challenging, uh, lead dad moment of the past month was having to say no to that final rum punch so you could take the kids back to the uh the cabin on the ship or no 
<laughs> that, are you more of a margarita guy when you're on a certainly one cruise? of the uh one of the the uh certainly one of the pieces for sure uh, <laughs> the i think the thing that's been the most challenging though is it's really hit me you come you know you you get a lot of distractions over the holidays and over everything that went on in the back half of last year which we've all talked about the the trying to keep that day-to-day motivation trying to to check yourself every day because it's easy to get over it um when you've got you know we've had a lot of illness you know my daughter's had a double ear infection and you know there's there's a lot of adjusting from the holidays and then obviously all of the traveling that i just talked about uh how it does have its repercussions and you as a parent you have to show up either way you don't have a choice and i think i have really felt a challenge of hey it doesn't matter how i'm feeling about it today i need to address it i need to make sure i have a you know compart- compartmentalized whatever that is because my kids still need me to show up today and and uh i will say it's it's harder to do even in the colder weather you know the the cold weather is, can uh, of course i don't know how you you know what your stance on cold weather you're up there in in uh, connecticut so that may feel a little bit different to you than it does to me but we get just the nasty sets in all day. I call it the the wet banana peel weather. Uh, it's just so mushy and the and uh, and it's it doesn't matter what you do. You still have to have a uh, a, a push to to show up and show out for your kids and and be what it is that they need you to be and you know work and keeping the house together and everything else. And so, you know, I, I'm hitting quite literally the most consecutive number of days in this new capacity of life. And, uh, and you know, this isn't, this isn't the, okay, well, I'm doing this for now till something changes. This is, this is what I'm doing. And so creating a mindset of that endurance, um, is is a challenge but you you know if you if you align your mindset right and especially when it comes to thinking about what's best for your kids and what's best for your spouse what's best for your household uh it's easy to get out of your own head and and stop obsessing over things that may be otherwise holding you back that's such a great point um you know uh, on, on on in two levels you know one you know, I've often found like the end of the winter is a time to sort of reflect because in summertime, uh, bananas go outside. You know, let's all yeah. go outside. Let's go out in the yard. Let's, let's go, go down. Let's go for a swim. Whatever you're, you're outside. Get, get on your bike. But in winter, you look out and it's raining. Uh, it's cold. Uh, it snow is great because they get excited and they go outside. But it's you know to reflect on it. But what you've just said there about you know that endurance mindset. I mean, sometimes you have to get used to the, the, the repetition of, of parenting and take the joys in those moments that break from the, the repetition, um, which kind of dovetails into our, our always final question. You kind of touched on it there. It's really poignantly and poetically the way you said it about that endurance mindset, but what are the big lessons, you know, from, from this, this past month? Is that it? I mean, it's a pretty good one. Yeah. That, I mean, it is a really good one. Um, and, you know, it's interesting. I, one of the the cool things about also working with the the company of dads is I get to sift through all of this dad material from all these other people. And you had a, a lead dad of the week not long ago talking about how he had a whole career in aerospace, uh, you know, science, whatever it was he was doing. And, he, you know, he got to a point where he had to make a decision. And it's like, hey, I got to be with my kids. I'm going to, I'm going to go home. And at, you know, when you, when you look at stories like that, it's really encouraging. It's really, you know, motivating. It's like, okay, I don't do anything remotely as important when it comes to the rest of the world as, as something like that. But when it comes to my kids, 
it's just as important. And uh, so, so yeah, being, being of the mindset that even when things feel monotonous or you just straight up worn out and, and I'll say it when you just want to go somewhere and scream into a pillow because you're, you're just done. Those moments are going to come. Don't feel bad about them coming, but like checking yourself when, when, when you feel those feel that consistently kind of coming up and you, so, so you kind of set your mindset get up in the morning and check yourself and make sure that at least by the time things are rolling and you're around your kids and everything else that you have put away a lot of that because they don't need that. They need you. And that's been a real, a real big one for me this last month. And, uh, so I'm, I, I feel like that that's it. That's, that's, that's where the money's at right there. Skip Cherry Holmes. Always great. Love our monthly check-ins. Month 10 for people listening. That means we only have two left. Uh, we've already talked about the grand finale in month 12, but we're gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna preview that too much. We're gonna wait till we get there. So yes. give Cherry Holmes, thanks again for joining us on the Lead Dead Diaries. Hey, thanks, Paul. <laughs>